que se nos fue algo importante. We lost an important member of our community. The founding father who brought about the design change of the turned hat. For over 2,000 years, a great indigenous people have inhabited this great valley in the Sinu River Basin. It is a community whose traditions, traditions have left for humanity a legacy made of a complex weave created by highly skilled hands. These people's ancestors built a legacy upon a traditional craft that is now a symbol of Zinu culture and also symbolizes a nation. How did it come to become an international symbol for a country? How did the turned hat come to be? We must picture these first people over 2,000 years ago. They were part of the great Zenu indigenous civilization, the lords of the Valley of the Sun. In the villages where these natives were born, they carved out patches to work the hard jungle. They derived their substance from. They worked the earth. They planted corn and they were skilled goldsmiths and pottery makers. In the hot jungles of the South American tropics, they needed a tool to protect their faces from the intense sunlight. And they found a plant that could help them achieve this purpose. They worked the available arrow cane daily for hundreds of years perfecting the rustic art of weaving the plant and shaping it into a hat, setting the stage for this town becoming a haven for artisans. The indigenous peoples of this area of Colombia lost their native languages in the years following the Spanish conquest. But, paradoxically, this knowledge has been transmitted through oral tradition for generations, until today. That is how this ancient art has been preserved. It is said that the best way to know a town is by observing how its people work, how they love, and how they die. That may be the best way of studying the city of Tuchin in the northern corner of the state of Cordoba. Tuchin is a town of 33,000 inhabitants. The economy here is based on the production of handicrafts, made of arrocane, such as the turned hat. Our grandparents were farmers. They grew corn, sesame, rice, yam, and cassava. For a long time, since before we were born, we have always used the turned hat, but not like it is now. In those days, we mostly used the quinceano, or the 15-straw weave. Quinceano is a hat made with 15 pairs of arrocane fibers. I've always said that as technology advances, the countryside advances as well. So we've been making advances in this field as well, and what we weave today is top-notch. I've always lived the life of an artisan, but my use of the turned hat goes hand in hand with agriculture, because I use it to protect myself from the sun. We only used it to go to the field or to protect ourselves from the rays of the sun. So it was only made for personal use. It wasn't really sold. They weren't for sale, but for our use.
Our grandparents made a point that the arrow cane that grew locally was a material that could provide for us, for our families. They taught us the value of the arrow cane that we have in this region. It was our grandparents who taught us how to make these hats. This part here is, is called the crown. This part here is the band. And this is called the brim. This right here. Our grandparents taught us to make this, and today we are very happy with it. And it's something that through time has brought us to where we are. This is a community that lives from the manufacture of turned hats. Whole families make their living from it. And since turned hats are a symbol of cultural identity for us Senus, this is a craft that has been handed down from generation to generation. The entire family participates in making this type of turned hats, from the youngest to the oldest. That is why I say that the making of turned hats is a collective family enterprise. Some people focus on weaving the braid of the arrow cane. Others make accessories such as bracelets, earrings, loose braids to make handbags and such. That is, people within each family or community specialize in working the different part of the arrow cane or the braid to make different objects. Tuchin is still at an early stage of its municipal development. Its citizens still have difficult access to basic living conditions, particularly in the rural areas. Homes are made of barreque, which is a mixture of wood, arrow cane, and mud. They do not have potable water, and some of its inhabitants have to make daily trips on donkey to nearby lakes to bring back water to their homes. They are a hard-working people. Tuchin's primary land uses are in the cultivation of corn, cassava, yams, sesame seeds, and arrow cane. The last item is the raw material most used by the town's artisans. Its economy is also supplemented by sizable livestock ranches. Julio Flores, Julio Flores learned to work arrow cane from a very early age. My father always said, let's braid arrow cane or let's harvest cassava, or let's harvest yams. And he never put me in school, even though I wanted to study. And he used to say, son, people study so they can learn to steal. Those who study only grow to become thieves. Let's harvest cassava instead, because that is where you truly learn, and that will be your future sooner or later. Because you have to find food for your home and not go down the wrong path and go steal from others. Because he used to say that school was just for learning to become a thief, but I realized that is maybe not the case. This is the knife we use to whittle the cane, which is what I'm doing right now. This one we use to scrape. These are called zapatillas, which is what I'm placing here right now. 
To make a hat, the arrow cane must undergo different processes. The process for us is to scrape it and take it to the market to sell it. The handicrafts that we make are mostly turned hats. Bags and all the products that are exhibited here. After being scraped, the arrow cane is soaked in a bitter cane solution and turns white. The first hats we made were white because we didn't know the technique to dye them. In order to dye the arrow cane black, you put it in a mud mixture for several days. Then the mixture is heated and mixed with a plant called bija. The prices we get for our turned hats here in Tuchin and in the town of San Andres are a little low. Because we make one of these hats here, then we take it to the market in Tuchin, and there we get only $35 for one of these hats. And when we look at all of the costs involved, and all of the labor it requires, and how involved the process is, all the stages it goes through, and all the material used, which you see here, it all goes into it. So if you look at all that, what little we earn is just enough to survive. Assembling a turned hat is a complex process. After the fibers are prepared, they're weaved. We do all of the process up to this point, but we don't use the machine. Another person sews with the machine. How do you rank hats by quality? How do you identify each hat? The 11 pies or 11 string is the cheapest and it sells the most. It's a rustic hat made from a rougher grade of arrow cane. It's a variety that is used just for this type of hat. The weave is thick and rustic. As you increase quality, then logically we use softer, thinner, and more supple grades of arrow cane. So this is the rustic hat. After that comes the quinciano. What does quinciano mean? We use 15 reeds of arrow cane in the weave, 15 strands. This is a traditional hat that sells well. After the quinciano comes something we called machi embriao. What does machi embriao mean? Male, female. They are part quinciano and part 19. What part is quinciano? In the ribbons and in the brim parts of the brim that are black and white. The 19 is in the crown and the side stripes, and that's the famous male-female hat. After the male-female hat comes a hat we call the 19. It uses 19 strands. Logically, as you increase the quality, we use better quality arrow cane. It's softer, wider, and has a better looking dye. The artisan Medardo de Jesus Suarez was born in the Indian reservation north of Bellavista in 1938. 
the artist Medardo de Jesus Suarez with the sewing machine made some of the most unique and sought after hats, which are worn by farmers in Cordoba and Sucre and also by the highest political and business leaders in Colombia. The turned hat was first noticed outside of Colombia during the 1980s, when Miguel Happy Lora was crowned bantamweight world boxing champion in 1985. He proudly wore a turned hat in the ring in front of millions of spectators around the world. Likewise, the following year, Pope John Paul II visited the country, and he also wore a turned hat. In both cases, the man who weaved their hat was the same, the Grand Master Medardo de Jesus Suarez. He's the man we call the ambassador of the turned hat. The town of Tuchin is still mourning his death. Unfortunately, that is the fate that awaits us all, and there is no way to escape it. An important man was gone. A sense of deep sadness permeated the environment, coupled with a profound respect to a defender of local traditions. For this community, he was a founding father. He changed the design of the turned hat. May God help him rest in peace. He left us that legacy. He's the man that made the turned hat into a universal item. He was a great artisan who represented us internationally. He was the first who started to leave this place and travel abroad, even going as far as Israel. He made hats for many dignitaries, as was the case with Bill Clinton, the Pope, and other personalities. I have been following in the steps of Medardo de Jesus, and it's very painful. <laughs> that such an important figure in our community is gone. The master's legendary legacy remains in the town, as he was always eager to share his knowledge. He, who was recognized and a master craftsman, took the time to teach others his craft and those who turned into master craftsmen as well. And through them, his creations will remain alive. He made a lot of creations with Aerocane, and he always shared his work. After he created something, he would show it to the world. And the indigenous person is quick to copy another's work. I used to tell him that he never kept his work as his own. He should have been the first to profit from it, instead of showing it to everyone. But what he did was to create something new and show it right away. And like I say, in indigenous culture, we are quick to copy another's work. And so he didn't get to keep it as his own. Right now, since Medardo passed away, I am the oldest remaining artisan. Master Marcial Montalvo learned how to sew in 1971 with his first sewing machine, which cost him at the time approximately 3,000 pesos or $150 at the current exchange rate. He manifested a remarkable talent as an artisan from his first stitches. And he is one of the men who learned the secrets of working arrow cane from Medardo de Jesus Suarez. What will happen if we're not around in 10 or 20 years? Who will represent us? If our craft is extinguished, how will we make a living? How will these youths make a living if they don't want to become part of the arrow cane weaving tradition?
We are in the north of the province of Córdoba, birthplace of the turned hat. It took a long time for the value of this artisanry to be recognized. Since up to only a few decades ago, some people were ashamed to wear hats. Many people were ashamed to use hats because they said that hats were for peasants, not appropriate for people in show business or from high society. But look how it's evolved all this time, since sports figures started using it. I repeat, I'm very thankful to Happy Lora, who was one of the first boxers from our province to wear a turned hat when he went abroad. And from there on, people started to take a liking to the hat. And it has evolved, becoming ever more popular. In the year 2004, it was declared a Colombian cultural icon. It is an object that speaks for itself that indicates a point of origin that symbolizes an identity and a culture. For me, the turned hat is more than a national symbol. It's an expression. Licenciado Antonio Morales, escuche lo que yo digo. Hay trabaje por su pueblo, para que vea lo que usted vale. Once, I showed my work here in the community, and I saw a high-quality 31-strand braid, and I said to myself, it's no big deal in the white part. But what if I can braid this for the striped area where the real technique is involved? If I can do that, I will show that hat. Back in the 80s, Families would specialize in making the figurines or patterns that we wear. There were traditional patterns like the grasshopper chest. The butterfly, the cocorilla flower, the lemon flower, the squash flower, the pilon, the spider. They were things that lived in our surroundings, so we started naming patterns after them. One is the cocorilla flower, which I don't have right now, but I do make it. The butterfly, that's something from our environment. If I am not mistaken, I think that there are 40 different patterns. But that's being lost. Because people now weave whatever they feel like, and they repeat the same pattern in all four sides of the hat's crown. The Tuchin turned hat plays a very important role in local customs, even extending into ways of building community and expressing love. When you're in the process of courting a woman, she will gift the man a hat. She will make him a fine hat because that way she is showing him that she likes him. It's cross borders. It's been to different countries, to the World Cup, in cycling. You see a lot of athletes on TV wearing turned hats. There are a lot of images of people wearing the hat, celebrities. So that fills us with pride, because no matter what they do to it, it's our heritage. It's from Tuchin, an indigenous village. Our people identify with it. It's a national symbol, and it makes us very proud. The truth is that we have inherited this art, and as I look ahead, I also want my children to learn this, because this is part of our culture, as indigenous peoples from Tuchin, San Andres. I also want them to learn about this, and I think that they have learned.
I want them to work and take advantage of the education that I gave them. But by this, I don't mean that they can't dedicate themselves to this, because we cannot forget it, because this is our culture. Now is the best time to recognize the weaving work of this indigenous town. Only from the outside can one appreciate its cultural richness and artisanal skills, which cannot be found anywhere else in the world. Its origins are humble and the daily needs of its inhabitants deserve our attention. Now is the best time to see to their needs so that this intricate skill is not lost. So that the people of the turned hat can continue to weave their legendary story in dignity. Bueno, y esto será para que quede para la historia. Ha, ha, ha.